Hola. ¿Qué tal? I am a data scientist who studies development. I started with biology, looking how fish embryos develop, mapping populations of cells that move, follow patterns, and make parts of the body, like the heart or the brain. Then I started to see parallels with human behavior. Patterns in migrating cells are like uh, human mobility patterns. For instance, in this video, you can see people moving around the city of Geneva. It has been done with information from their mobile phones. Both visualizations use data in revolutionary ways. This is important because what you cannot measure, you cannot improve. And the opportunity that brings big data is to measure in real time and high definition. I work at Global Pools. This is a big data innovation lab in the United Nations. Since 2011, we have been translating between policymakers and data scientists and geeks. Believe me, it's very complicated. We do big data for development projects around the world. Let me show you some examples. Information on food access and consumption is critical to deliver food aid when and where it's most needed. Food security assessments are typically done with household surveys. This is like a door-to-door -door process which is time and resource consuming. So what if we find a different way to measure food security. We compare the household surveys with anonymized and aggregate information from mobile phone activity in an East African country. And we discover something. Actually, the money people spend buying credits for their mobile phones is proportional to the money people spend buying food items in the market, such as meat or fresh vegetables. Et voila, this is a quick and cheap proxy indicator for food consumption in market-dependent households, just made of mobile phone activity. Some say that big data is the new oil. I think big data is the new green energy. You can fully recycle data, use it and use it again. Like in the project Global Forest Watch, which is an online tool that uses satellite data to map forests and fires around the planet. So anyone connected can track deforestation one tree at a time. This picture is from a fire in Sumatra. Using this type of information, Indonesian firefighters have reduced the time that takes to reach the fire from 36 hours to just four hours. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that is good for the forest, but it's also good for the 50,000 people in Sumatra that suffer from respiratory disease. Big data can also be used to give very precise recommendations, like telling farmers when exactly they should plant their crops. Colombian researchers have crunched 10 years worth of data on crops, soil, and weather, I make a recommendation engine for farmers. Despite climate change, this artificial intelligence methodology has allowed the farmers to adapt and increase their crop production. But big data is not just produced by sensors, by satellites, by phones. It's also about what people say. It's important that the voices of the citizens are included in the discussion around sustainable development. This can be done listening to social media. At Global Pools, we have created a dashboard, like a digital mirror 
of which are people's priorities and concerns as expressed in social networks. Over the last year, we collected more than 250 million tweets. And we saw, for instance, how in India in August, we spoke about food subsidies, in Brazil about discrimination, in September, in Portugal about jobs, in October, or nowadays, Spain is speaking about corruption. Not everybody can tweet. You might wonder, and what about the digital divide? What about those that do not leave digital footprints? This letter from my friend Maria just came from Uttar Pradesh in India. In Uttar Pradesh, there are many villages with no mobile network or internet connection. Still, those villages are connected to the world by their post office. Worldwide, there are more than 650,000 post offices, and each time a letter or a parcel is sent, its data story is automatically captured. This single letter has produced more than 20 data points. This data can be analyzed, like a tweet or a Facebook post. Indeed, probably, the postal network is the oldest and the biggest of the social networks. Global Pulse, we partner with the Universal Postal Union to uncover the hidden patterns in postal flows that might reveal something about human well-being. But don't worry. No one is going to read your love letters. I mean, before analysis, we aggregate and anonymize the data. Each of the dots of this visualization represents thousands of real letters from country to country. Each day, one billion letters travel around the world. Yes, one billion with B. The internet of postal things has the potential to give a global picture on economic trends, migration, poverty, and resilience. Letters, tweets, phones, we are all living the data revolution. For the first time in history, we can measure in real time the well-being of populations, how we react to natural disasters, or how our public policies are working. There are no more excuses for data gaps. No one should be left behind because we were not able to count them. It is time to build together a future where we respect and protect data privacy and data rights, where data is not a mystery or a threat, but the new green energy. It's time to build a future where data by the people is for the people. Muchas gracias.